angels, Creator blessed, vouchsafe within our souls to rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid, and fill the house which thou hast made. To thee the Comforter we cry, to thee the gift of God most high, the fount of life, the fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. The sevenfold gifts of grace are thine, O finger of the hand divine, true promise of the Father thou, who does the tongue with speech endow. Thy light to every thought impart, and shed thy love in every heart, the weakness of our mortal state, with deathless might invigorate. Drive far away our wily foe, and thine abiding peace bestow. If thou be our protecting guide, no evil steps can be tied. Make thou to us the Father known. Teach us the eternal Son to own, and thee whose name we ever bless, of both the Spirit to confess. Praise we the Father and the Son, and Holy Ghost with them one, and may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Amen. Send forth thy spirit and they shall be made, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Ghost, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify thee. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against ungodly people. O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art the God of my strength, why hast thou put thee from me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresseth me? O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me into thy holy hill and to thy dwelling and that I may go into the altar of God, even to the God of my joy and gladness, and upon the harp will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. <clears throat> why art thou so heavy on my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my com con countenance unto my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will go into the altar of God, even to the God of my joy and gladness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Confess unto the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endureth forever. I confess to God, a blessed Mary, to all the saints, and to you that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God, and you to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee and forgive thee all thy sins. Deliver thee from all evil, preserve and strengthen thee in goodness, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to God, to blessed Mary, and to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God, and thee, Father, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon you and forgive you all your sins, deliver you from all evil, and preserve and strengthen you in goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, time for true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. And blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth, now and forevermore. Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's give a blessing. The Lord may this incense be blessed by him in the tongue that shall be burned in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. shall call upon me and I will hear him, hear him with him in trouble. I will deliver him and bring him to glory. With length of days will I satisfy him. Whoso dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yeah, with him in trouble, I will deliver him and bring him to glory. With length of days will I satisfy him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who purifiest, purifies the church by yearly observant of Lent, 
Grant unto thy family that for what they endeavour to obtain of thee by fasting, they may follow up by good works. Through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The lesson from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, we beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succoured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation giving no offence in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labours, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armour of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to accept thee and to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Whoso dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He will say unto the Lord, Thou art my defender, and my refuge, my God, and I will trust in him. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunter, and from every mutinous word. With his wings will he overshadow thee, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His truth shall compass thee around about like a shield. Thou shalt not be afraid for any terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. For the thing that walketh in darkness, for sickness or the demon of noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but thee it shall not come high. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt step upon the asp and the basilisk, the lion and the serpent shall thou tread under thy feet. Because he has set his hope upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will shelter him, because he hath learned my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him and bring him to glory. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, do the blessings will be in my heart and mouth that I may preach the Holy Gospel of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.
the Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, the continuation of the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and minister, ministered to him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. With the words of the Gospel, may our sins be blotted out. <coughs> <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the Gospel for today, we have St. Matthew's account of the temptations of Jesus. St. John the Forerunner, the baptizer, had come out of the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance and the advent of the kingdom of God. In the baptism of Jesus, John's mission was fulfilled. Here was the longed for Messiah, he sh that should come. He was the Messiah, sealed by the descent of the Holy Ghost and the divine com commendation, this is my beloved Son. Here at last was the bringing in of God's new kingdom, looked for by the prophets and martyrs of Israel, present but not spelled out in the hopes of the Gentile wise men. The hopes and expectations the desires and longings of countless years all came to a focus in this man from Nazareth. This was no ordinary moment, but what more precisely was his vocation and his kingdom that was yet to be made clear. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and there in the wilderness an explanation comes. God's kingdom the age-long conflict of good and evil, of light and darkness, is in this moment fully explained. In general, the things of darkness are things obscure and confused, muddled and indefinite, but the coming of light makes them plain. In the clear simplicity of the desert, away from all familiar distractions, the conflict becomes an open one. The devil, that is to say, is manifest, and the temptations of Jesus the nature and forms of that conflict are made clear. First, he is tempted to turn stores, stones into bread. The devil wants him to, be, to turn the divine power to essentially worldly ends, to satisfy the demands of the senses. Not that there is any, anything evil about being hungry and wanting to eat, but the temptation lies in seeing such satisfactions as the purpose of his vocation and the point of God's kingdom. But the kingdom of God does not consist in eating and drinking, 
so it does not consist in devices to make the world more comfortable and convenient. Man does not live by bread alone, but by the whole word of God. The second temptation is to test, and that is what tempt really means. To test the divine powers. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. It is a temptation to measure the divine power, to control and manipulate the, the divine spirit according to one's own terms. It is the temptation to try to have God under control. But God's kingdom and its miracles have nothing to do with using God for human purposes. The miracles of God's kingdom have quite another character and purpose than this. Thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. The third temptation is more fundamental and indeed is the root of all the others. It is the ancient diabolical temptation of Adam to be as God. It is a temptation to see one's finite self in the place of God. To be oneself the absolute measure of everything, that is really to worship the devil. All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. It is of course an illusion. An illusion of futile pride and ambition, because it is untrue to the absolute reality of God and his order of creation. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. That is to say, the devil is unmasked. The illusions are revealed for what they are. They are the temptations to use God for worldly ends, and the temptation to regard one's human self as God. Once they are unmasked, of course, they are absurd. Uh, they are absurd. There is nothing so absurd as a devil. But humankind has great capacity for blindness and self-deception. And behold, angels came and ministered to, unto him. With the temptations dispelled, Jesus is free in his vocation and mission. The perspective is right, and the angels, the justice of God's universe, will serve him. These temptations of Jesus represent the essential forms of all temptation. They are our temptations and the temptations of the church. They are the illusions that we can use as divine spirit for worldly ends, that we can make God subject to our whims and idle curiosities that can be as absolute as God. In this season of Lent we are led up by the Spirit into the wilderness and the point is that we should be made free from our illusions. For this a kind of wilderness or a certain quiet is necessary. It seems that the world goes faster every day we have wars, we have bombings, we have Covid, we have all the, 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 consume, the, the, the uh, increasingly consumed, the world is increasingly consumed by its complex business, busyness, there's noise and activity everywhere and always. Sundays are no longer sacrosanct, dedicated and, and set aside for going to church to worship the Creator. They're spent shopping, uh, swimming, football, uh, eating in restaurants. It comes to pass that there is no time or place for quiet reflection. We are hidden to ourselves, muddled and confused about ourselves, and inclined to measure everything in terms of immediate worldly ends, and that is the very devil. A certain wilderness is necessary for the clarifying of the spirit. Turn off the noise for a bit. Shun the continual distractions for a while. There's a powerful modern prejudice in favour of busyness. Even the church seems determined to keep us busy. Even when we have retreats, which used to be times of quietness, the inclination now is to turn them into conferences with discussion groups and drinking and eating together and, and socialising. <coughs> the ancient Christian hermits, the Desert Fathers as they're called, had a point when they claimed that the real battles of the spirit, the real confrontations with our devils, take place in quiet and isolation. Lent calls us to participate, at least in some small way, in that fight to the desert, in the flight to the desert, in the fight there to try to see ourselves clearly in the undistracted light of God's word, to identify our illusions so as to be free of them. Impractical perhaps in some sense, but then what really is practical? 
What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Our supposed practicality can be very soul-destroying. Genuine practicality, purposeful activity, requires a clearness of perspective and a dispelling of illusions. That is what today's Gospel, the Holy Gospel, is about. And that is what our Lent should be about. Lest, as St Paul says, we receive the grace of God in vain. St John in his first epistle, summing up the three forms of temptation, puts the matter this way. Do not love the world or the things in the world. But if anyone loves the world, loves for the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides for ever. Let us use this Lent for periods of quietness, of reflection, of prayer, little pockets in our daily lives, lest we not receive the grace of God in vain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. With his wings will he overshadow thee, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His truth shall compass thee round about like a shield. Receive our Holy Trinity, this oblation which I am worthy to offer in honor of blessed Mary and all thy saints. For my sins and offences, the salvation of the living and of those of all the faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, let this new sacrifice be right, acceptable to Almighty God. Session of the night of the archangel is coming at the right hand of the altar of the incense and all the election of the Lord Vouchers for blessed incense to receive it for a sweet smelling savour through Christ our Lord. May this incense which thou hast blessed ascend unto thee, O Lord, and may thy mercy descend upon us. 
Let my prayer law be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer law be set forth in thy sight as the incense. My prayer law be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer law be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer law be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer will be set forth in my sight of Jesus. Let my prayer will be set forth in my sight of Jesus. My prayer, Lord, is set forth in thy sight as an incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Be set forth in my sight as the incense. Let my prayer will be set forth in my sight as the incense. Let my prayer will be set forth in my sight as the incense. more pollution of mind and body, that I may in purity perform the holy work of the Lord. In the spirit of humility, let us contrite out, let us be accepted of you, O Lord, and let our success be so far as in thy sight of the next of you, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord my God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Pray, brethren and sisters, for me, that my and your sacrifice may alike be accepted by the Lord our God. The grace of the Holy Ghost will live in my heart and lips, and the Lord gracious accepts the sacrifice and praise of my hands for our sins and offences. Just and for our salvation, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, 
the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting Lord, who with thy only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one Lord, art one Lord, not one only person, but three persons in one substance. For that which we believe of thy glory which thou hast revealed, the same do we believe of thy Son, and of the Holy Ghost without difference or inequality, that in the confession of a true and everlasting Godhead, both distinction in the persons and unity, in being and equality, in majesty be worshipped, which angels and archangels praise, cherubim also and seraphim, who cease not to cry, with one voice saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Thee therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, we most humbly pray and entreat to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, this holy, immaculate sacrifice, which we offer to thee in the first place in behalf of thy holy Catholic Church, to which do thou deign to give peace to God, to unite, to govern it throughout the whole world, together with thy servants, Kirill, Patriarch of the East, Bartholomew, Ecumenical Patriarch, Francis, Patriarch of the West, Damien, our Bishop, Elizabeth, our Queen, all the Orthodox and maintainers of the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and thy handmaidens. And all here present, whose faith is approved and whose devotion is known to thee, in whose behalf we offer unto thee, or engage in offering unto thee, this sacrifice of praise for themselves and for all pertaining to them, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their own salvation and security, and are paying their vows unto thee, the eternal living and true God. In communion with, and reverencing the memory in the first place of the glorious and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, as also by blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all thy saints. For whose sake and prayers grant that in all things we may be strengthened by the aid of thy protection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. This oblation, therefore, of our service and that of thy whole family, we beseech thee, O Lord, graciously to thee to accept and dispose our days in thy peace, delivering us from eternal damnation and causing us to be numbered amongst the flock of thine elect. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Which oblation we beseech thee, Almighty God, that thou wouldst vouchsafe in all respects to bless, approve, ratify, and make reasonable and acceptable that it may become to us the body and the blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and adorable hands, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, and to thee, his Father God Almighty, gave thanks to thee, blessed, break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this. For this is my body. Likewise, after supper, taking also this most excellent chalice into his holy and adorable hands, and giving thanks to thee, 
He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting testament, the mystery of grace, which shall be shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of me. So, Lord, we thy servants together with thy holy people, calling to mind the most blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord God, together with his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, offer to thy most excellent majesty of thy gifts and bounties a pure, a holy, a spotless sacrifice, the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, upon which thou vouchsafe to look with favourable and gracious countenance, and accept them as thou didst accept the gifts of thy righteous servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the pure oblation which thy high priest Melchizedek offered to thee. We humbly entreat the Almighty God, command these things to be carried by the hands of thy holy angel to thy altar on high, before the sight of thy divine majesty, that as many of us as shall be partaking at the altar receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all grace and heavenly benediction. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Remember also, Lord, the souls of thy servants and handmaidens. Who have gone before us with a sign of faith and sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we pray thee, grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, thy simple servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs. With John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, with all thy saints, into whose company not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offences, we beseech thee to admit us. Through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, thou ever createst, sanctifiest, quickenest, blessest, and bestowest upon all these good things. By him, and with him, and in him, is unto thee, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory. Throughout all ages, worlds without end. Amen. Let us pray, admonished by saving precepts and directed by divine institution. We are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, receive thee from all evil, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession, all blessed through the blessed and ever glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul and Andrew, and all saints. 
graciously keep peace in our time, that aided by the help of thy loving kindness, we may both be ever set free from all sin and secure from all disquietude. Do the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee liveth and reigneth in unity with the Holy Ghost, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Let us now serve union with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who between all who receive the part of mind and body, and the in preparation for their return into eternal life, who in Christ our Lord. O Lord, Holy Father, O Almighty, everlasting God, grant me so worthily to receive this most holy body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that I may thereby receive forgiveness of all my sins and be filled with thy Holy Ghost and have thy peace. For thou only art God, and there is no other beside thee whose kingdom and glorious dominion abideth forever, world without end. Amen. Peace be unto the end of the Church of God and with thy spirit. O God, the Father, fountain, source of all goodness, who moved by thy loving kindness, did will thine only begotten to descend for us this lower world and to take flesh, which I unworthy here hold in my hands. I worship thee, I glorify thee, I praise thee. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, live us and reign as God, world without end. Amen. Now for the more most holy flesh of Christ, to me before all and above all the highest source of joy, body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intimate Son of the living God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May I offer more heavenly drink to me before all and above all the highest source of joy, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, be unto me a and a perpetual healing unto everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who has refreshed me with the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that this sacrament of our salvation, of which I am worthy sinner, have partaken, tend not to judgment nor condemnation according to my deserts, but be profitable to the preservation of my body and soul unto everlasting life. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now come to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though thou wert already there. I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
the Abbey's partaken of with thy mouth, O Lord, may we receive with a pure heart, and by a temporal gift may our thinking be effective. This communion, O Lord, cleanse us from sin and make us partake of every meal. Mm -hmm. This is all the sign of the cross whereby we have received the sacrament of salvation. With his wings will the abbey shadow thee, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His truth shall compass thee round about like a shield. Jesus, remember me when I come into thy kingdom. Jesus, remember me when I come into thy kingdom. Jesus, remember The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. May the holy oblation, O Lord of thy sacrament, give us a new life, that laying aside the old man we may pass to the fellowship of thy saving mystery. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light, the which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Lord, save thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave, we pray that thy servant, our Queen Elizabeth, who by thy mercy has undertaken the, the, the government of this realm, may we soon cre increase of all the fit... Oh, Almighty God, we pray that thy servant, our Queen Elizabeth, who by thy mercy has undertaken the government of this realm, may receive increase of all the virtues fit adornment for a queen, enabling her to shun all foul temptations, overcome her enemies, and with the royal family be welcomed at the last by thee, who art the way, the truth, and the life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty and most merciful Father, who by the childbearing of blessed Mary, ever virgin, has revenged our ruin, and by the ministry of thy holy angels dost ever succour and defend us, keep, we beseech thee, our diocese under thy continual help and protection, that we, ever needful of thy grace, may bring forth for thee the fruit of good works and the harvest of souls. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the song of the three children. O oh, ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. O oh, Ananias, Azarias, Misael, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son with the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a psaltery and harp. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the song of the three children, which they sang in the furnace of fire, and give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Our Father, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise and magnify Him forever. Blessed art thou, Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and to be praised and exalted forever. The Holy Trinity, bless and keep us. Amen. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Turn us, O Lord, God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who for the three children has quenched the flames of fire, mercifully grant that we, thy servants, may not be consumed by the flames of our sins. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindle now reigns in the hearts, O Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost, that we may serve thee with a chaste body and please thee with a pure heart. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Prevent us, O Lord, we beseech thee in all our doings with thy favour, and further us with thy help, that all our works may be begun, continued, and ended in thee, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.